Welcome to another episode of Simmer Clips. Today's question is inspired by our JavaScript for Digital Marketers online course. Remember to check the video notes for more information about this course and all our other online courses. And now let's take a look at what today's question is. How do I add my own listener to the data layer push method without disrupting how Google Tag Manager works? This question might be more relevant if you're building an integration with the data layer, but you might find it useful for other reasons as well, such as when you want to do something with the information that is pushed to data layer outside of Google Tag Manager. In this video, I'll show you how you can override the data layer push method without compromising how Google Tag Manager works, because if you recall, the data layer .push method has to remain intact for Google Tag Manager to work. If you browse to a site that is running Google Tag Manager, you might already know that Google Tag Manager overwrites the data layer push with its own custom listener. You can always check the value of this listener by typing window.datalayer to push into the JavaScript console. If you see something like this, it means that Google Tag Manager has already applied its changes to the data layer push method. What Google Tag Manager actually does with the listener is it takes all the key value pairs in whatever objects you push into data layer and copies them into its internal data model. This internal data model is used to fuel data layer variables, for example, in Google Tag Manager. In this video, we'll explore how you can add your own custom data layer .push listener without compromising how Google Tag Manager works. So we add an additional layer of logic on top of data layer push that doesn't interfere with Google Tag Manager's functionality. You might also know that if you overwrite the data layer or data layer push method, Google Tag Manager will stop working. So we need to take some precautions to make sure that Google Tag Manager doesn't break when we make our modifications. This is the pattern we'll be using. First of all, we wrap everything in an iffy to make sure that any variables we declare outside a function call will be treated as local variables and they won't interfere with the global namespace. I talk about ifis extensively in the course JavaScript for Digital Marketers. On line two, we do a simple window.data layer declaration. This creates an empty array out of window.data layer unless previous reference to window.data layer already exists. This is a good precaution to make in case you run this code outside Google Tag Manager, where a race condition may, might emerge where this code runs before the data layer has been created in which case it would error out because you, there is no data layer push method to override. On line three, we create a reference to the previous version of data layer push. This is very important because if this code runs after Google Tag Manager has created its listener, we need a reference to Google Tag Manager's listener. And that's what gets stored in old push. Then from line four onward, we actually override the current data layer push method. The override is done with a function where on the first line of the function block, we store whatever was pushed into data layer with the current data layer .push call into a local variable called states. This is an array out of the arguments to the push. So in case you push a single object, states would be an array with just a single object. In case you push multiple objects in one go, states would be an array with as many items in it as there were objects in the push call. I've left a comment there called modifications as a placeholder for where we'll be adding our changes. And then the return statement is absolutely critical. The return statement sends the states object, so the array of objects pushed to data layer, back to Google Tag Manager's own data layer push. This is the key to making sure that Google Tag Manager doesn't break. So this pattern of storing the original reference in a variable and then applying the states to that original reference is what allows us to add layer upon layer upon layer of side effect logic to the window.data layer push method without having to worry about breaking other connected tools in the process. I'm going to share with you three use cases in this video, and there will be more ideas in the article linked to from the video notes. The first use case is simply to log what was pushed. So whatever object or objects are pushed to data layer, we log them into the console. This could be a useful debugging tool, or you could use similar logic to actually log this into a data warehouse or BigQuery in case you want to know exactly what was pushed at any given time into data layer. We'll commit our modifications to memory by pressing enter. And now we do a simple data layer push call. And this data layer push has one object with a bunch of key value pairs. So we have the event key set to the value page loaded, and then we have a page object that has the title and URL keys set to some values. 
So this is how a single page application could work, for example. But we're just using it as an example to illustrate our changes to the data layer.push method. When we run this call, we see that there's a log in the console of an array. And this array includes what we just pushed into data layer. So we successfully tapped into the data layer push method, and we are dynamically logging everything that was pushed into the console as well. You might wonder where gtm.unique event ID came from because it wasn't part of our push. Well, that's actually modified by Google Tag Manager after the states object has been passed to the old push variable. So because of timing reasons, and because we are passing the same object around both in the console log and in what is passed to Google Tag Manager's data layer push, when Google Tag Manager makes changes to this object, they reflect in the console log as well. Let's reload the page to clear the state. I just mentioned that Google Tag Manager dynamically modifies the state objects as they are pushed to its data model. Well, you can do the same thing. You can dynamically add information to every single data layer push or just the pushes you, you care about before the state's object is passed to Google Tag Manager's data layer. So in this case, we loop through all the objects that were in the data layer push and for every object, we add a custom timestamp key with the current timestamp as the value. Let's return to our previous data layer push. Let's run it. And now because we're not logging anything to console, we have to actually open the window.dataLayer object and expand its contents. So type window.dataLayer and press enter. Expand the array and scroll to the object corresponding with the item that you just pushed. As you can see, it now has the custom timestamp key set to the value of when the push actually occurred. And this is also passed to Google Tag Manager. So you can now create a data layer variable for the custom timestamp key if you want to access the timestamp of the data layer push. Dynamically updating the state objects like this can be extremely useful in case you want to add information to every single push or just a handful of pushes that might require a lot of work in the back end or the front end to do manually. This third use case is slightly more intricate, but it gives you a unique insight into how Google Tag Manager works. What we are doing here is after every single push, we want to log the current computed state of Google Tag Manager's data model. For this to work, you need a reference to the container ID running on the page and store that in the local variable container ID. This is then applied to the Google Tag Manager global object created by Google Tag Manager. And then there's some data layer.get magic, which I explain in more detail in one of the linked articles. We need to change the order of things a little. Instead of returning the applied push, we need to do the applied push first and store the result in a variable. Then we log the data model and finally we return what was the result of the applied push. If we try to log before applying the changes to old push, we would always lag one step behind Google Tag Manager's state because the old push.apply command updates Google Tag Manager's data model. So that's why we need to break things apart a bit and insert this console log between the old push.apply call and the return statement. Enough theory, let's see what happens. After committing this to memory, let's run our data layer push again. And now you should see an object logged into the console. And this object represents all the key value pairs currently stored in Google Tag Manager's data model. And these are what would be used to populate data layer variables. There's a bunch of stuff here that are not present in any data layer push call, such as GTM allow list and GTM block list or GTM.triggers or this tag type blacklist down here. These are all added by Google Tag Manager somewhere within its internal mechanisms and they all have utility, but they're not something you need to be concerned about. We can see here that the current state of the event key is what we just pushed to data layer, and we can also find our page object nested within. Logging this computed state is a great way to debug Google Tag Manager in case you are wondering why aren't your, some of your changes being applied to the internal data model, for example. The purpose of this video was to show you a pattern of how to add side effects to the data layer.push process that Google Tag Manager uses. It mostly has debugging and logging utility, but as the second use case, I showed you how you can dynamically update anything that is pushed to data layer in case you want to add a unique push ID or a timestamp or something similar without having to modify your backend or frontend code. It also applies to anything that Google Tag Manager pushes to data layer. So things like click triggers and form submit triggers also use data layer push 
and they would also benefit from these dynamic state object mutations.